Hi, this is Popper's Candles, and this is Living a Sustainable Dream. Today, I'm going to be making a cake, um, actually an orange cake, uh, with our wood cook stove. So as you journey with us, I'll tell you why this tradition started up many, many years ago. All right, the first thing I'm going to make with this cake is actually the, the orange filling. I already got most of my ingredients out. I'm going to go ahead and start working on um, grating the orange uh, rind off and getting that ready to go. And then I'm going to cook it right over there on the wood stove. The first thing I'm going to use is this really cool tool called the microplane. And the microplane is just something my wife bought when she was creating lemon zest for a lemon blueberry bread that she makes for the farmer's market. Um, it's a delicious bread. Uh, but she wanted the lemon zest, and the lemon zest is perfect uh, for this thing here. So what I got is um, two oranges. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the zest. Now these are smaller oranges, um, which is fine, but I just wanna make sure I get enough uh, of the peel to make the zest that I need. So I'm just uh, resting it on this bowl here. This bowl is probably older than uh, my wife and I. The recipe calls for one orange and uh, one rind for the icing. And so I'm making a orange cake with an orange icing uh, that will go in between the two layers. And I'm also gonna put that icing on top as well. The frosting of the cake will be a vanilla with a hint of orange zest in it. And the rest of the cake is gonna be orange flavored. This is looking really good. Sometimes it gets trapped in there, you can just push it down. And there is juice also in the, uh, the rind of the orange as well, the peel. Not much, but this is what really adds the flavor or the orange flavor to your cake, or icing in this case. This is an old school uh, juice machine we got from a secondhand shop, oh gosh, years ago. I'm not even sure how we got it. I remember my wife and I saw, we like we were getting into maybe juicing, um, you know, oranges at that time. It's great uh, for these kind of applications where you want to put some fresh squeezed orange juice into um, an orange cake or your orange icing that I'm making. So I'm just going to cut the oranges in half. I'm going to stick them in the juicer. I'm going to use this measuring cup here to just put it in and capture all the juice I can. I believe I need half a cup of uh, orange juice. It doesn't have to be freshly squeezed orange juice. It's just that I've used the rind of this orange and I want to kind of just use the oranges themselves that I have, um, just not let them go to waste. And always be careful not to smash your thumb. And those two oranges produce probably the half a cup I actually need. So that's gonna work just great. All right, let's go back to the recipe and see what I can do from there. Okay, the next step is I have the orange juice and I'm ready to go. So what I need to do is go ahead and put two eggs into the KitchenAid mixer here. I'm gonna add my half a cup of freshly squeezed orange juice. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my two tablespoons of butter. And I really like the fact that, you know, you get the butter that has the marks here on what the tablespoons are. So I just go ahead and cut what I need. I like to cut it up a little bit just so it's easier to mix in. I have a fourth a cup of sugar. I'm using just a organic sugar. Okay, now I have a tablespoon of orange rind that I'm gonna add. and a tablespoon of some lemon juice. Okay, let's go ahead and mix it up. Okay, I've been mixing this for a little bit and it's not mixing up completely together and that's because the butter is not melted. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start cooking it. I'm gonna take this out and put it in a saucepan over here on the wood cook stove and cook it down and it says I should be uh, 
cooking over uh, hot water, uh, stirring constantly is like a double boiler. Well, I'm going to probably uh, not, I don't have a double boiler that I have to work with, so I'm just going to go ahead and cook it for about 10 minutes and thicken it up. It just means that I have to stir it more often so it doesn't burn or scald. I'm just going to go ahead and check the oven temperature real quick. It's about uh, 440 um, something degrees. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of keep this on at that level and just kind of stir it with my sauce spoon here. I'm going to get that all to melt down. So once I get that all melted down and cooked for about 10 minutes, it will be ready to be chilled. To speed things up, what I decided to do is go ahead and make a makeshift uh, double boiler. I put boiling water into the same size uh, pan as you can see over there. Uh, that The bottom one is the same size pan as the one on top. The, the top one is the orange filling and the bottom is obviously the preheated boil water that I put under there. You can kind of hear it boiling a little bit in the background. That will cook a little bit slower and do what it needs to do. And while that's doing what it needs to do, I'm going to do what I need to do to get the cake batter ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and start making the cake batter. Now this is the orange cake section of the recipe and what I need to do first is cream the shortening. I'm gonna add sugar gradually to it and then creaming until it's light and fluffy and then add one egg at a time uh, to mix it in. Uh, it's going to be a pretty loud process. I'll have the KitchenAid mixer running again to save even more time. There is orange juice still left, a little bit left in there from the orange filling. It's not going to hurt a thing. I need to add orange juice anyways. It'll just help with the orange flavor. So I'm not cleaning this until the end of the cake batter. Just save time. So the recipe I have calls for sifting the flour. And sifting flour is um, it's a lost culinary art. A lot of people don't even do it anymore. Uh, part of the reason that sifting the flour was um, part of the process is that there was a fear that there would be bugs in your flour. A little weevil type things that would get in with the, the wheat process. And now with our you know, food processing that we have, uh, it's virtually impossible for anything to grow in this, this food that we're eating. And I don't, I don't think that's a good thing either. Uh, but here's what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and sift it and we're gonna sift the ingredients together, which helps with the mixing process for the batter to make the cake hopefully uh, fluffier. So I'm not going to give up um, the sifting of the flour, even if some people say uh, it's unnecessary, you don't have to do that anymore. I'm going to go ahead and do it just so I can mix the dry ingredients a little bit more thoroughly before I mix it into the batter. And it calls for that for three times. So I have two bowls. So I can just sift it back and forth. I use a coconut oil shortening, and I know a lot of people are lighting up the internet about, oh gosh, this is the worst saturated fat the body can have. Well, you know what? It's the best tasting when you're making an orange cake to have that little coconut flavor to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it anyways. Um, this is organic, uh, and I'm gonna put a three-fourths of a cup in to the mixer, and then I'm gonna mix in the sugar. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the one and a half cups of organic sugar that I have. Uh, you can use any sugar you want. Uh, I just choose to use what's in the pantry and that's what we get. So it's it's sugar. Sugar's not healthy for anything. All right. The next step is to get the, the orange juice ready to go. The flour, the dry mix. Now I need to get the wet mix together. So I'm going to go ahead and using the same measuring cup that I use for the sugar because this is going to rinse out and put more sugar back in. Uh, get all that stuff that's stuck to the sides. But I'm going to use a cup of orange juice. So I'm totally changing the recipe. It's a half a cup of orange juice and a half a cup of water. I'm going for the full orange juice effect. I'm going one cup. Now this is orange juice from Concentrate. It's not the freshly sque uh, squeezed orange juice I use for the, the filling. I'm going to just go ahead and add the whole thing since water's already been added this way. So why not go one full cup of orange juice? Next thing is added is a tablespoon of lemon juice. And in the past, I've actually squeezed uh, fresh lemons and gotten it that way. Uh, this year, I'm just kind of trying something new, uh, trying a little bit more pre-prepared pre 
made things from the store, a little bit of the lemon juice from concentrate, some orange juice. I used to, do, I've done this all from scratch. I mean, we're squeezing everything. It just takes a long time. It makes it more laborious. So I'm going to just try it out, see what, what it tastes like and uh, just shorten, shorten it up a little bit. The mixture right now is pretty good. It's really moist. It's got the eggs in there. It's got the shortening and the sugar. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is start with the flour, baking powder, and salt mix that I did, the dry mix. I'm going to start adding that to it, get it a little bit thicker. Once it starts clumping up too much, then you add the liquid back and forth, back and forth until you achieve the balance that you want. Something nice and creamy is what I'm shooting for. I have done that so many times. When you add powder to a running mixer, it blows everywhere. So if you see my Tom and Jerry video uh, from Christmas, you'll get what I warned and I don't always remember the warning. The icing that I've been working on while building the cake batter is done. And so what I would need to do is I need to chill it because once the cake is done cooking, I need to add the icing to it, um, but it has to be chilled. So let me go ahead and grab that off the stove and show you what it looks like. So the double boiler did work pretty good. It is a nice kind of almost like a tapioca type uh, consistency to it, but it's not done yet. It needs to chill. So what I'm going to do is something incredibly uh, smart or incredibly stupid. It just depends on if it works or not. I'm going to go ahead and put it into this um, Pyrex bowl that I have. Okay, and there it is. And this is one of those really neat Pyrex bowls that comes with a lid, like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in the coldest place I know. Let's put this in nature's refrigerator. That looks pretty good right there. That's fine. That should chill great. And you do that. Fits in there just like this. Boom. And I like to put the curl face down like that so it stays down better. And then I'm going to grease the whole thing uh, once again with the coconut shortening. Uh, now do that times two. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and coat the pan uh, once, uh, with the coconut oil um, shortening. This will keep the, the cake batter from cooking to the pan and getting stuck there. I'm just using a, um, a brush that you can just get. I'm just going to go ahead and get that all the way around. Now, if you've survived the video this long, you might be wondering, why is this guy, this mountain man type guy, this guy that lives off grid, going through the trouble of making an orange cake? Well, this is a tradition that started over 10 years ago. My wife was having a birthday and we were living in this small town out in the middle of Oregon. And uh, this town, literally, I taught at the school there. There's, I think, um, gosh, 37 students for the high school, 12 of them exchange students. It was like having a United Nations in my government class. It was actually very cool, but there was no real store next, uh, next spot. Uh, there was no store that <clears throat> served ice, ice cream, uh, mud pie. My, my wife's favorite, uh, birthday, uh, dessert is mud pie. So <clears throat> for me to go into town, which was a 90 minute drive to get the nearest mud pie back home would have been a pretty amazing feat. So I told my wife, don't worry about it, I'll just buy you a cake, it'll be no big deal. Well, my wife doesn't like store-bought cakes. Um, she thinks they're too processed, uh, you know, just it's not, to her, not, doesn't taste well. And so I said, well, what, you know, you can't have someone just say, you know, skip the cake, I don't care. I mean, that that, that kind of wrecks the, the whole thing about the birthday anyways, and I understand why my wife was, you know, kind of disappointed, but I was like, you know what? This isn't going to happen on my watch. Um, 
guys that are out there that you have a uh, significant other, your, your spouse, that person is probably the most important person to you in the world. And my wife is the most important person to me in the world. And I want to make sure that she had a great birthday because her birthday is not only special to her, it's very, very special to me because without her birthday, um, I would never have met the woman of my dreams. Uh, so not to get too mushy, I pulled out this book that we bought. And the reason we bought this book is because we were looking for recipes that didn't require uh, corn syrup. And to get a recipe for like how to make homemade syrup and so forth, you have to find a book before the invent of corn syrup. And so you have to go way back into the early 1920s, um, even the 1915s, 19, you know, the 19 teens. Uh, if you can get a really, really old cookbook, you can get it before all that garbage had entered into our, our uh, food system. And then all the other cookbooks use that stuff and they don't do it natural anymore or as natural as possible. So I bought this old cookbook and you guys saw it. It's called A Woman's World. Uh, you can't get any more uh, misogynist uh, than that. Uh, but it's a great cookbook and I love it. Um, and so what started out to be almost kind of like a a uh, attempt by me to cook something. And I'm, I'm not a baker. In fact, uh, I should stay out of the kitchen most of the time. There's a few things that I can do really, really well. And um, baking a cake is not one of them. Uh, I've gotten better over the years. And it kind of came out to, it was my attempt at making a cake. So I attempted the cake. And the cake I did first was a wedding cake. I and mean, the thing had like 10 eggs in it. And the thing was like, dense, solid cake. So that one was a flop. Um, I think it was a brick. But my wife enjoyed the effort. And um, and she is very graceful. So I tried another cake. This one was like a, a chocolate hazelnut cake. I tried a rolled cake. And then finally I came across this orange cake. And you know, you learn things about your spouse um, that you didn't know before. And I didn't know that my wife was a fan of orange cakes or cupcakes. So I went ahead and made an orange cake. And I think, okay, let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. My wife loves this cake. I mean, that's an understatement. My wife is dying to have this cake today. Um, she literally waits. Uh, my birthday comes up in November. Hers comes up, um, you know, in January, and she's already talking about this cake in November. Uh, I make it once a year for her birthday, just for her. It's her birthday cake. It's what she wants. And, you know, that's what she's going to get is what she wants. It's her day. So, guys, if you're out there and you want to do something for your wife for her birthday, um... Consider trying to learn how to bake a cake for the first time. And if it flops, go to the store and buy her another one. If it doesn't, you're a hero for the day. And you got to ask yourself, you know, are you willing to, you know, put down, you know, what, what's interesting you for just one day for your wife to just kind of slave away in the kitchen um, and my wife is amazing. She does most of the cooking. She's a stay-at-home mom. And I go out in the workforce. And she takes care of the home. And she takes care of the meals. And it's it's amazing. And if my wife was in the workforce and I was a stay-at-home dad, that's what I would do. Is I would take care of the meals and make sure everything was done right. Clean the house, that kind of stuff. Um, that would be my job. And I know a lot of stay-at-home dads that do that. That work the homestead. While the wife goes out there and does the, uh, the, the the job. But anyways, this orange cake, and uh, I'll put a link to it. And I've done a blog spot on this before, and I've had my son help me make the cake. But this year, the only time I could make it literally was when he went to his basketball game. So my wife's got him at the basketball game right now, and I'm finishing up the cake, making sure it's there, ready to go. All right, there we go. It's right there. Now I just have to bake it. 
I also like to make our cake in the wood cook stove. And so this is the, the baking a cake in a wood cook stove video. So let me go ahead and get that ready to go and just show you the temperature you need um, to run the wood stove and how I've been getting it going. I'll just talk a, a real brief about that and then put it in. Okay, here is the Kitchen Queen uh, wood cook stove. And this thing is a great workhorse. Not only does it um, heat the house, but as you can see here, it heats our domestic hot water throughout the home. And it also cooks our food really nicely. So let's go ahead and take a look inside just to show you and to see if I have about uh, 20 to 30 minutes of firewood uh, available in here to burn. And the answer to that is a definite yes. And that looks great. Okay, so I'm gonna help go ahead and close that. I have the bottom damper open. As you can see here, this can close, but I got it open all the way. The temperature on the outside is around 275. Let's take a look on the inside. Here we go, let's take a shoot. 400, 309, 423 on the side and 385 on the firebox side. Isn't it amazing how it flows? The air flows underneath, up the side, over the top, and back in the firebox. I've had this open pretty much all morning. So while I've been making the icing and the cake batter, this has just been open. And the open vent for that is right here. Okay, so there we go. This is just the stick I use to turn the wood. But that is the oven is open. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. I'm going to take a look right here. This is the back vent. I have it open so I can check the firebox. I'm going to close that down. So now the heat is trapped inside the wood cook stove. I got my cake pans and I'm ready to go ahead and put them in. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that up. And slide it right back in there. There we go. And cake pan number two. Right there like that. Let's see if that will close. Perfect. Okay. So that is in there and I need to set a timer for about 25 minutes and come back and check on it. Easy as a slice of cake. The timer is off. Uh, it is time to check the cake and see how they turned out. <laughs> That is done. That is also done. Okay, I'm just gonna let those cool and then I'll flip them out and um, make the cake. Happy birthday. Careful. Oh. The Leaning Tower of... Ready? Make a wish. 